Good morning, my name is Bartolomeo Montrucchio and uh, in this video we will see some experiments on uh, measuring MTF on, uh, of a lens with the IMA test. Uh, in particular we will use a slanted edge approach and uh, just to introduce the problem uh, we will see very briefly this uh, excellent uh, uh, white paper from uh, Zeiss, in particular from uh, HH NAS, uh, that was re released some years ago. That is uh, quite interesting because uh, it has a good introduction, you can find uh, it on the internet, of course. And uh, it is uh, very interesting because uh, it has a, an, an excellent introduction, in particular on uh, MTF. Uh, I remember you that uh, the MTF is basically the magnitude of the optical transfer function and uh, the optical transfer function is the Fourier transform of the impulse response and uh, normally this OTF, so the uh, optical transfer function, is uh, real valued and this means that OTF is equal to MTF and uh, in this case, uh, we are, in the sense that we are, uh, we will work uh, in this video uh, in that case. Uh, however, sometimes uh, it happens uh, that uh, aberrations or misfocus uh, are present, and in this case, uh, OTF uh, may become negative valued or even complex valued. In this case, MTF is uh, the, the magnitude part and uh, there is also the phase, that is the PTF, phase transfer function. But as I told you before, we will uh, limit ourselves uh, to the case in which uh, uh, MTF is real valued and is uh, in this case equal to the OTF. In particular, you can see here that uh, given uh, the, the input value, that is the black one, the sinusoidal pattern, you have uh, as a result uh, the image uh, uh, in which uh, basically the, the response is limited and this is uh, the basic idea of uh, MTF and um, however there are many ways to show uh, MTF for example uh, in this case or even other presentations this is uh, quite common okay and uh, you change the spatial frequency of the input uh, and uh, you get a result uh, up to 100%. That means that uh, uh, everything you, you enter into the system, it exits also. And um, in this report, uh, uh, in this report, you can see that very, um, it is very useful because, for example, you, it is possible to understand that the global MTF of the system is the product of the MTF of the lens uh, by the MTF of the film or of the sensor. And uh, in this case, uh, in the case that we, I will, uh, will present you, we will, of course, have an MTF of a lens and an MTF of a, sensors, of a sensor. In order to guarantee that uh, the MTF of the sensor is not uh, so important, it is quite important to guarantee a very good sampling of uh, uh, the, um, the input coming from the lens and uh, since we will operate in particular with uh, this uh, lens uh, that I choose because it is very quite common and uh, with very good specifications uh, this is the standard uh, data sheet from Zeiss and uh, you can see that uh, here there is uh, there are the MTF charts and uh, this is uh, uh, measure that uh, uh, f at an f number of 2.8 while this other is measure that f number 5.6 uh, we will work uh, uh, at both uh, 2.8 and 5.6 but please note that this MTF is measured on the lens only why we will measure the MTF on the lens plus the sensor and uh, in order to reduce the influence of the of the sensor, like uh, for example in this case, uh, if uh, the color film has a low MTF, 
the MTF of the color film uh, um, lowers a lot the global MTF. While uh, if, for example, uh, the, um, the two MTFs are similar, of course, uh, the result is uh, better. Okay? Uh, so, basically, what uh, will be the, uh, the system that we will use? At first, uh, we will use this lens, as I told you, and uh, we will use uh, also a camera, an industrial camera, and we will use in particular this camera from Edmund Optics, uh, which uh, has some uh, excellent characteristics, in particular, it is a, a, an 18 megapixel, this is the resolution, but probably the most uh, interesting uh, thing uh, from our point of view is uh, uh, the pixel size, the pitch, that is 1.25 microns. So uh, it is able to sample very well the, the input from the lens, even if, uh, please note that in order to sample correctly the airy disk, you should need at least four samples for an airy disk diameter. And since we will work at 2.8, and since uh, there is a basic rule that says that the airy diameter is uh, 2.8 multiplied by 1.3, so basically 3. Point something, 3.7, something like this, uh, we should have uh, uh, a sampler that is uh, much lower than one micron uh, also considering that in this case this is a color camera so we should uh, have uh, a, an additional sampling frequency uh, we have not it uh, but uh, we will see that it is uh, uh, more than sufficient for what we want to do even if uh, uh, strictly speaking uh, we would need a, a better sampling for 2.8 for sure anyway we will be able to sample efficiently for the uh, for the main frequency main spatial frequency that uh, we we want uh, so basically we can start to see which is the uh, environment that we will use in this case uh, here we will see the software of the camera that uh, of course was already prepared while in this case uh, there is uh, in a, a webcam uh, that uh, uh, sees uh, the lens in order to see which is the, the focusing and uh, uh, the camera is targeting a target that is basically a, a slanted edge uh, slanted of about six degrees five six degrees and uh, uh, this uh, target is about 2.5 meters far from the camera and uh, this uh, length, uh, the, this distance, is uh, required in order to uh, reduce uh, the size of uh, errors on the, on the target, uh, on the plane of the sensor, in order to avoid the problems due to the imperfections of uh, the target. Uh, moreover, uh, since uh, in this case we are at uh, more than 100 to 1, for the lens, uh, we are using the lens uh, uh, with a, a quite normal uh, usage. Uh, so we will see here, this is a, a strong enlargement of this point in particular. And here we have a line, a profile, that is this. Uh, which is the reason for this uh, profile? It is because uh, we need to be sure that uh, there is uh, no over exposure or under exposure on uh, the edge that we want uh, to consider. Um, please note that the camera is a color camera and so uh, uh, it, is, it, is, it is able to capture color images. So let's uh, begin uh, to see um, uh, which are the main parameters that we can uh, check with uh, this camera. Uh, apart from trigger, that is of course uh, useless in this case, uh, input-output also, we do not use uh, such parameters. About uh, the exposure, uh, we can see that uh, uh, there is no automatic uh, exposure, uh, of course. About uh, the white balance, uh, I have put the white balance as off 
And uh, another important issue is uh, the edge enhancement, basically something like Unshark Mask, that is uh, disabled. Uh, the lookup table is not inter of interest in this case. About the colors, um, everything is off. Uh, the format. Uh, this is quite important because now uh, we are using a, a system that is doing the buyering in software with high quality in RGB, RGB uh, at uh, 12 bits for each channel. Please note that the camera is a 10 bit. But we can also uh, use uh, the sensor uh, row system at a 12 bit, and then we will use uh, it. Uh, we will see very clearly here the result of using uh, the, um, the, the, the row format. But for the moment, we can consider the, uh, the buyer, uh, the buyer head uh, image. About the size, we are using, of course, the full size of the camera, 18 megapixels. Uh, about the image, you can see that the cane is put to zero in order to avoid to reduce uh, uh, lost uh, from, uh, from the noise as much as possible. Uh, please note that for the same reason, uh, the target is uh, large, because if the target is large, uh, IMATEST is able to compute very efficiently the slanted edge MTF while if it, if, uh, it uses uh, a little number of pixels, of course, cannot work very well. Uh, about the camera, uh, you can see that uh, here we are managing uh, basically the exposure. And uh, in this case, we are using about uh, 124 milliseconds for each frame. This is the frequency because after all, it's a camera, it's not, a, it's not only a for uh, single shots and this, these are basically infos okay uh, so now um, we can begin at first uh, to see uh, something about uh, the, the target because i told you that the target is quite important and uh, so we can begin just for curiosity to see the target better and I will use uh, the webcam in order to show you that uh, depending on how the target is printed, we can have uh, uh, different problems. In particular, in particular, we can see that uh, changing uh, the, uh, the way in which uh, it is printed we can see with some difficulties that there are some uh, errors, some details. Maybe we can enlarge better to be sure to be see better. This uh, target was printed with uh, a, um, a standard uh, Okay, while uh, this other target uh, that is uh, quite similar to the one used uh, uh, there is printed with another printer. Uh, so this means uh, that uh, even uh, changing uh, uh, the camera can uh, produce, uh, sorry, the target can produce uh, significant uh, problems. Um, so basically, we can uh, begin to see uh, what uh, the system is able to do. Uh, now there is a, a focusing. We will modify in the time uh, the focusing, but uh, uh, we will, uh, this is not a big problem now. So for the moment, uh, we will uh, acquire a first uh, shot and uh, we can do it. Now we can save it. We can save it. Uh, of course, I have uh, selected uh, previously a position 
and uh, this uh, position of the focusing uh, I call it the disposition A so since now the, the F number is 2.8 uh, we can uh, write something uh, like this uh, please note that we are saving a file that is a PNG file but uh, is already divided because uh, in this case it is the reading software from the software for of the camera. Please note that if we add use the a standard uh, photo camera, the, um, we will uh, we would have uh, add a different format, for example CR2 or other thing like uh, ORF for Olympus and others, uh, NEF, NEF for Nikon and so on. Uh, but uh, in this case we would have uh, the need uh, of using for example this hero for the buyering uh, the image. Now we can try to use uh, Imatest. Uh, of course uh, many thanks to Imatest for providing me a license for didactic purposes. And so we can see that uh, Imatest is a quite complex program. It is able to do a lot of things but we will use uh, a little part, of course an important part, but a part of what is able to do. In particular we will use uh, SFR and SFR is for uh, spatial frequency response that is uh, after all the MTF. So we can select this and uh, he will uh, my test will be able to compute. Please note that he selects uh, automatically uh, a region, in particular in this case because I have already uh, done this before, otherwise uh, it could be requested to adjust the region of interest or select a new region of interest, but it is another problem. So we can start here. Uh, please note that it is a length uh, from Zeiss uh, and this is a serial number just for curiosity. It is important to put here the, the F number, the F stop, and here we could write uh, uh, the specifications of the camera, uh, but is not of course mandatory. Uh, the very important uh, setting is this, because we have to put 1.25 microns per pixel uh, in order to be able to compute uh, the MTF uh, given frequency for uh, for millimeter and not uh, cycles per pixel. So now we can run it and it uh, will uh, produce basically what we need. We don't save them. This is about uh, the RGB, uh, RGB edge profile. Uh, we see that uh, the different uh, colors are slightly different. Uh, and uh, this is uh, basically the result of MTF. Please note that we, have, we are at uh, with an f-stop of 2.8 and uh, this is uh, the, the li diffraction limit, limit, theoretical limit, that is a little bit far of course, uh, but uh, the length uh, is uh, working well because the MTF 30, so this means uh, the point here in which we have uh, the 30% of the MTF is approximately here and it is 125 cycles for uh, millimeter. Um, and it is a, a quite good uh, result. Now uh, we can delete this because it's not so important for our purposes, but I would like to try to show you uh, some uh, issues that could be present. In particular, we could uh, begin inserting uh, edge enhancement, okay? So basically we are doing uh, something like uh, Anshar mask directly uh, in hardware, okay? So we can start. You can see the effect of this, okay? We can maybe reduce slightly the exposure because the, the light is... Uh, slightly changing okay uh, and then we can capture the same image here and save it uh, like a USM a mask 
28. 28 is for an f-stop of uh, 2.8. Um, so now we can see the effect of uh, the, the buying, uh, sorry, of the Anshar mask on uh, the, the system. We can go here, load the new file. Please note that there are no differences in focusing or other things. Uh, with the exception of a little difference in the exposure, but it's not a big problem in this case. And uh, we have to insert again 2.8, and then we can uh, run it. We don't save results. We are not, ah, please not here the effect of the Anshar mask, okay? And, uh, but, and uh, the main effect is here you can compare directly the MTFs and uh, this is the main effect and uh, here also. Please note that we are uh, going, we are, um, we are getting results better than the theoretical limit that of course is a little bit strange. Please note that we could arrive theoretically uh, if uh, this uh, image were without uh, Anshar mask up to uh, almost uh, 400 cycles by mi four millimeter. Please note that originally we had basically 250 lines per millimeter. Okay, that is quite good. Any any anyway. Please also note that if you use, if we use, if we would use a, st a st sensor with a pixel size uh, larger, for example, uh, 3.75 or even 6.41, 6. Uh, uh, six point something is about a uh, Canon EOS uh, or uh, uh, about four microns for, uh, for the new cameras, uh, this result would be uh, worse because uh, the sampling rate of the sensor uh, would be not sufficient for getting uh, such uh, excellent result. Because uh, as we have seen before, we would not extract fully the potential of the lens. So now, uh, of course, it is better to uh, exclude the the, the, buyer, the sorry the Anshar mask in order to have again the standard behavior. But now I would like also to do some little experiment with the uh, uh, the buying because now the the buying is done in software with high quality, uh, 12 bits for channel. Now we could uh, uh, convert our working principle to uh, 12 bits row. So we have to uh, open again and uh, uh, we can uh, change uh, the exposure in order to better have such exposure. Sorry, too much. Okay, something like this. Okay. Uh, please note that the target is avoiding uh, uh, under exposure. So uh, please note that if you see the line, uh, okay, uh, this is uh, the point. Interesting, this, okay, this is the edge. And uh, um, in particular, it is very important that there is no under exposure here, so that there are no pixels uh, without uh, under zero. And there, are, there must not be pixel with uh, 255 or something like this. Please note that in this case, we have, we have uh, 4095 because we have 16 bits, even if actually we have only 12 or better 10 bits from the camera. Anyway, given this exposure, we can catch again uh, the image and uh, uh, save again. This uh, could be something like a uh, row 28. And uh, now we have to see the same uh, image in uh, the row format. Uh, in order to do this, uh, we can uh, see again from here. Maybe we can close uh, images with Anshar mask because they are not interesting for us in this case. So we can uh, load the uh, raw image 
and uh, in this case it is a little bit more complex because at first since this is not a CR2 file or a NEF or ORF or ORF file it is not a proprietary file it is a generic raw file that is put in a PNG so we have some possibilities uh, because it depends uh, where the red is put uh, in the um, in the image and so uh, Imatest puts uh, at our disposal this instrument and uh, in this way we can change this and uh, changing this we, we can understand which is the right uh, solution and uh, of course the right solution uh, is this and uh, uh, so now uh, this is okay and then we have two possibilities to do the, the mosaicing, uh, mosaicing uh, by means uh, of uh, a, an internal uh, software version of Imatest or uh, going to see the primary channels for example in particular uh, now we are interested in doing the mosaicing please note that if we add uh, an image from a camera, for example an Nikon or Canon, we would need the uh, zero that is available here. But uh, in this case we don't need it. And so we could uh, do uh, a demosaicing, a mosaicing. And uh, uh, of course uh, now we can run it. We can set again 2.8 and run it. Uh, again we don't save uh, this is basically as before and so now we see that there are some slight differences uh, even if uh, please note that the image is absolutely uh, the same uh, so this means that uh, this the mosaicing was better <coughs> okay um, now we have seen uh, that uh, before we we were very we, we take we were very careful in uh, uh, for exposure okay uh, let's try to change the exposure and uh, uh, let's try to uh, produce an over exposure uh, it is quite simple because uh, we have very simply to do something like this okay uh, please note that the exposure that we are measuring now were something uh, like this and uh, uh, just for curiosity if uh, you use uh, a standard uh, exposimeter uh, we can measure easily what is uh, the result uh, supposing uh, going at 100 ISO we can imagine something like this and uh, this is uh, the image so the exposure is uh, at 2.8 uh, about 1 8 of second uh, and uh, 1 8 of second uh, is 100 point uh, sorry 125 a little bit something like similar and here we are using 100 point, point, uh, 155 so it is quite similar Anyway, now let's try to do something wrong. So, uh, producing a, uh, an overexposure, maybe not too much, but uh, anyway, an, so an overexposure. And uh, now, uh, what happens? It happens that this is full white. Okay? Uh, basically, these pixels are burned. So, now we can uh, capture again. Uh, the image, save it, uh, something like uh, a row over 28 and uh, now we can uh, try to <coughs> open from here the, uh, the new one, this is this and if we open it we do as before in order to directly compare the two results here we write 2.8 and 
we can uh, no saving nothing okay okay if you compare directly the two results you can see clearly that this result is quite better please note that it is not the same because we have to compare uh, the other one so the row but anyway this is much better you can see that is 146 but this is uh, not correct this is not correct because uh, it is uh, due to the fact that we have some clipping and uh, there, there is overexposure uh, imatest is able to understand that is overexposure and to signal it okay so this means that there are some problems uh, so basically this uh, this example is not uh, correct okay uh, so again we can consider uh, the old example as uh, the the right one okay now uh, the basic idea is uh, to try to change uh, the the focusing in order to understand what is the difference in terms of focusing but before changing the focusing i would like uh, to um, uh, at first to change this and put again something like this we have to restart the camera okay at first i would like to maintain the same focusing and change the f-stop in particular uh, as i told before we will try to use f5.6 that is from the data sheet the best uh, f-stop for the camera for the lens and so now we can change the exposure in order to improve uh, to, to use uh, in the best way the the the, the sensor and so now we uh, will capture with the same focusing another image at uh, f5.6 so we capture it we save it and it will be a a i remember that is the focus position 56 okay it is not raw it is not overexposed uh, and of course it is not with a sharp mask in this way we could compare directly uh, this one a28 with uh, the uh, a556 in order to understand which are the differences uh, given the two uh, f-stops so here we will do of course the same as before and uh, we put 5.6 we select ok and now uh, we do not save uh, we are not interested in it in particular and these are the differences and you can see that at f5.6 we have a strong improvement in the MTF please note that from the theoretical point of view this was quite far from the limit while this is very near to the limit but in absolute values uh, we passed from 125 to 156 cycles for millimeter so this means that we have more than 300 lines per millimeter okay uh, so it is a quite good result please note that we are uh, using a, a very wide angle uh, lens even if uh, please also note that we are using only the very center of the lens because if you uh, go to see the the lateral uh, parts of the lens of course uh, it will be it would be very very much different anyway now as i told you the basic idea is to try to change the focus so let's try to change the focus okay uh, we will change the focus by using 
sorry at first I have to restart the camera so you will be able to see uh, directly but please before I have to set again 2.8 also because it is easier to see the differences in focusing so at first I have to avoid clipping so I have to reduce the exposure okay it's okay so now we can see the focusing please note that in the focusing uh, we have basically no colors with the exception of uh, a little bit hint of blue and uh, now we will change very slightly very slightly because uh, I have done some experiments of course before and we can get uh, uh, better results so uh, we, we will change very slightly and we will put this one uh, in between f8 and f5.6 of the depth of field scale it was only a reference of course uh, something like this okay very slight changing as i told you before uh, so the changing here is very little but anyway we can capture an image now and uh, we can call uh, this position uh, uh, B and so we will uh, call this B28 uh, and uh, we now we are changing the f-stop again to 5.6 uh, of course we restart the camera uh, the software is still saving uh, the file now is going uh, so now we have to change again the exposure of course we need more light a little bit more light okay and so now we have uh, 5.6 in the second position called the B we get the snapshot and we save it calling it B56 okay now um, we can uh, go to see what is uh, the difference uh, here okay so let's open the file we can open B 28 the same region of interest 2.8 and uh, save results no we are not interested in this so now the result is uh, this okay is 101 cycles uh, per uh, millimeter okay let's open the uh, 5.6 b again the same region of interest 5.6 I remember that it is useful in particular to see which is the theoretical limit on the on uh, the image no I don't save hit okay so we have the results and uh, now we I would like to finish this uh, video with something that is interesting because if you see the white paper that I introduced at the beginning uh, you can see uh, problems uh, related to focus there are also problems due to the fact that if you use a monochrome camera you can get better results by putting a filter in front of the lens but in this case it is more difficult to, to do because uh, um, in this case this is a color camera so if we, if we put a filter in front of the camera of the lens of course we reject a significant part of the light but uh, this is another problem 
But the important thing is this. Uh, if you compare the position A with the position B, for example, if you compare A28 with B28, you can see that A28 is better than, for sure, than B28. Okay? But if you compare A5, uh, so uh, I remember you, uh, A is better than B. Okay? But if you compare B A56 with B56, you can see that B is better than A. Uh, so this means that, uh, please note that we have focused the length at 2.8. So this means that if you change the F stop, uh, the behavior changes and uh, there is usually, because of uh, aberrations and effects of the lengths, you can have uh, a little focus shift. So theoretically, in order to get the best from the lens, you should refocus for each f-stop. That of course it is uh, uh, very difficult. But anyway, it is interesting to see how this behavior can be seen very clearly because B is better than A here. But changing the, uh, the, the, the f-stop, in this case, A is better than A and then B, sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, we have basically seen uh, uh, many other possibilities, many possibilities of doing this, and I would like to, to, to end this simply trying to move, uh, um, please note that this uh, uh, position is the best position for F5.6, uh, so I would like to change uh, the f-stop again and maybe try f11 just uh, to have an idea of what can happen when we close too much the, um, the f-stop. Of course, here we need more exposure, so we will be able to increase partially the exposure. Uh, is not fully sufficient, but it would could be it would be correct enough to do to take the snapshot. And uh, now I can capture the image. And uh, now I can save the image. And of course, will be something like uh, B. Uh, 11. Okay. Now we will uh, go there. Uh, we could, uh, for example, delete. Uh, well, maybe we can delete this. We can take the B because it is the same uh, focusing. We can also delete this. Okay. So we can compare directly. 2.856 and uh, 11. So now we can use it. The basic idea is always the same. Yes. In this case, we can write 11. Okay, so save not. Uh, please note the chromatic aberration is little now, okay, but this is another issue. We are not interested here. So now we can compare directly the results. Okay, so this is 2.8, 5.6, 11. Okay, you can see very clearly that the chromatic aberration basically disappeared, so the MTF is the same or almost the same, but we have sacrificed a lot of resolution because uh, we have basically the same resolution of uh, f2.8, but of course without the light of uh, uh, 2.8. Okay, so uh, I suppose that uh, we have finished. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, Thank you again.